Hi. I thought I'd revisit my three-phase alternator project that I worked on about a year ago just to uh, examine a second mechanical drive system for the thing. Like I say, I built this about a year ago. It's a six magnet and nine coil type uh, alternator. This has proven to be remarkably durable. Um, using these idler pulley bearing housings uh, at either end was a good idea because they're they're very sturdy um, housings for the drive shaft. Now um, my other videos show the construction of this thing. There's uh, six magnets which are all neodymium, a uh, stack of six discs. They're very powerful. And <clears throat> nine coils with a three-phase output uh, run through a rectifier bridge to produce DC. Now, the uh, output of this unit has remained remarkably constant as well. Uh, when I first built it, I measured 50 volts and 750 milliamps with a free-running system. And it's exactly the same now. And when I was initially putting it together, I used a four to one gear ratio uh, winch gear drive, which works pretty well. You just screw it down the ends and use a um, handle to crank it. But I wondered if I could get a better output uh, if I used a large pulley system. This gear is 1 to 4 ratio. But how could we improve on that with a pulley? Well, we'd have to have a very large pulley and a very small pulley. Now at the back of the machine here, I put a small pulley, which is a two and a half inch pulley. And it's a two and a half inch aluminum pulley with a five eighth inch shaft. Now all I've done is um, filed off a, a flat spot on the threaded five eighths inch shaft, put on the pulley, and tightened it up with its tightening screw, which is, uh, takes an Allen wrench. It takes a number four Allen wrench. That's uh, one of these things. So that's a small pulley. And I want to drive that with a very large pulley. Now, in order to get more than a 4 to 1 ratio, I wanted to get as, as big a pulley as I could practically manage. And uh, they come in various sizes from 1 foot diameter to uh, 14 inch, 15 inch, even up to 16 inches. The largest one I could find was 16 inches. So, that's something like this. Okay, big pulley like that. Now, these pulleys come as is with a about a one inch hole uh, in the center. Um, they don't come with a hub. The hubs come separately and that's so that you can buy your choice of uh, diameter pulley, uh, pulley and then choose the hub that you want uh, which has the, the selected shaft bore that you want. In my case I wanted a 5 8 inch but they're available in 3 quarter, 1 half or whatever. So you uh, match up your desired pulley diameter with your desired uh, shaft diameter in, in the hub and then you weld 
the hub that you buy into the center of your of your pulley. I don't have any welding equipment, but what I did was I used a blowtorch and some uh, stainless steel core solder, which works just as well. I just uh, basically soldered it on both sides. Okay, uh, one thing also to note about this hub is you can see a slot. So um, this will take a slotted stock shaft, which uh, you know helps if you're driving the pulley uh, with a with a drive shaft. In my case, I'm having the pulley turn loosely on a shaft, which is uh, sitting in a bearing. Um, but you could also have a pedal arrangement with a shaft which is being driven by the pedals and uh, and that shaft would be a slotted stock like this so in this particular case I'm just using a hand crank scenario where the pulley is going to uh, rotate through a bearing and I'm just turning it with a handle which in this case is another bearing on a bolt which goes through the uh, pulley which was reasonably easy to drill through and um, then you have as you turn uh, the wheel the pulley the bearing rotates in your hand and uh, it, it makes it easy to uh, go through the full rotation okay I'm gonna move the camera over here while I set up I'll just show you one thing here uh, in order to have a support for that pulley and uh, line it up with the smaller one get some kind of a workable system the simplest thing I could come up with was just a board which bolts on to the uh, generators frame and with a bearing inset into the board this is a 5 8 inch bearing um, the outer diameter is about an inch and a half, so I've used a, an inch and a half hole saw to drill a, a hole through the three-quarter inch plywood and set the bearing into the plywood, and that provides a support for the pulley. So I'm just going to uh, set that up here for a second. I'll put the camera over here. Gonna put the belt on here. This belt is a 62 inch belt, and I'm I've got a fairly loose tension between the two pulleys. I don't want it too tight because I don't want too much tension on the angular tension on the sh either the shaft. 
on the generator nor on the bearing in this plywood over here but this is enough to uh, give us connection between the two pulleys. If you can see that okay. Should be able to. Now, how much does that really give us? Like I say, the gear drive over there was 1 to 4 ratio. And theoretically, this one with a 16 inch uh, pulley and a 2.5 inch pulley should be six, 1 to 6.4. But what I'm really getting, if you look at this marker here, let's see, I'm going to put another marker up here. I've got, okay, I've got a mark on the top of the pulley. This is our position here. And let's just turn it through. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then seven. And as you'll see, we're back up here. So we're actually getting a one to seven ratio with this. So probably uh, the smaller pulley is actually more like 2.25. It's 2.5 uh, on the outer diameter, but the actual pulley. <coughs> Within the depth of the V, it's more like 2.25. So we're getting a ratio of 1 to 7 from this pulley system. Now that's a pretty good ratio. Now we're talking like almost, almost, um, well, 1 to 4 versus 1 to 7. That's almost double. Anyway, so what, what, uh, what does this mean in terms of speed? Well, the actual speed is one to seven, uh, like you, like I said here. Uh, if you <clears throat> look at the oscilloscope output from one of the phases while this is uh, turning it at maximum speed, what happens is <clears throat> I did this earlier, and and uh, the space between each peak is one point four. 1.4 and the setting is 10 milliseconds per uh, per unit so we've got uh, 0.014 seconds now there are three sine peaks per mechanical rotation in this type of generator so um, this means 0 0.042 seconds per rotation and in a, in a 60 second minute that's a rotational speed of the shaft of 1,428 RPM. Well, that's pretty darn good for a mechanical hand crank system. 1,420 RPM. <coughs> so what kind of an output do we get? Now, here's where you start to see something regarding the electronics again. <coughs> um, one of these generators uh, has a self-limiting property when you talk about the inductance that's generated by the by the coils uh, or the reactance which is generated by the coils as they have current running through them um, as the speed of rotation increases yes your voltage increases and yes your current increases but only up to a maximum value at which point it becomes self-limiting because the current through the coils uh, tends to um, tends to resist any further increase in current through the coils so what actually happens? You don't actually get a 1.7 times increase in voltage and current. You get something a little bit different. If the uh, voltage and current in gains were uh, equivalent to the uh, ratio of the 7 to 4, which would be 1.75, then uh, 
our increases would be more than what we actually see. Um, let's see what we do get. I'm going to crank up the meter here and connect the meter terminals to the output of the the uh, alternator. Okay, we've got it on voltage, and I'm going to turn the pulley. You can see it's up to 85 volts there. Okay, well, <clears throat> at a leisurely cranking speed, it's more like 75, but as you can see, it will get up to oh, 82, 85 volts. So I mark down a nominal value of 75 volts. And what kind of current are we looking at? This is with no load on the system, correct? Uh, if we look at the current under the same circumstances. Wow, that was 800 milliamps. Okay. But is that really great? Um, yes and no. The initial voltage with the 1 to 4 ratio was 50 volts. Uh, uh, 75 to 80 volts in this system is a little less than what we'd expect because at the 1.75 ratio you'd expect an 87 volts and we're getting slightly less than that we're getting maybe uh, one and a half times or 1.6 1, 1 times okay uh, the current is less than that though um, we've only gone up from 750 milliamps in the gear drive system to 800 milliamps in the pulley drive system even though the gear, even though the ratio is uh, quite a bit more. So we'd be expecting for the current something more like, well, if I look at a, at a, at a charging current ratio, um, when I was charging a 12-volt uh, battery, um, I was still maintaining a 700 milliamp um, charging current with this pulley system. Now with the gear system I was only getting a maximum of 550 to 600. So we've got an increase of maybe um, one point three six. Okay. If you uh, use the 1.75 theoretical ratio uh, it would be 962 expected milliamps of charging current but we're actually only getting about 750 which is an increase of 1.36 over over 550 so you can see that uh, the static static generated voltage uh, is almost linearly uh, related to the increase in, in speed or RPM, but the current is the charging current is not because once you start putting current through a load, you get a self-limiting effect, which is related to Lenz's law. Okay, so this is electrical generation through brute force.